Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and today we'll be taking a look at the Mad Cat's Bat 6 Plus. Possibly the best mouse I've ever seen with one major downfall. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so in today's video we'll be taking a look at the Mad Cat's Bat 6 Plus. Um, I'm not too sure where the 6 plus number comes from, I didn't see versions 5, 4, 3, 2, or 1 for that matter. But regardless of what the naming scheme is all about, this is a fantastic mouse. Now it is an ambidextrous mouse, as some of you possibly may have realised already, and possibly if you're looking this up, looking for what is possibly the best ambidextrous mouse on the market right now, there's a very strong chance you've actually come to see this video. So this has 1600 dpi, it's powered by the Pixar PWM 3389's optical sensor. It has the Mad Cat's Dakota switches, which claim to be possibly some of the best switches you can get in a mouse with 60% faster click and also very, very limited or almost entirely reduced debounce. So these switches are designed for those of you that want the absolute best out of your gaming peripheral. It also includes the new Cyborg Gaming Engine, which is Mad Cat's own software for taking control of all the features such as adjusting DPI, RGB colours, all those kinds of things, setting macros, which we'll take a look at a little bit later on in the video. Also it supports 400 IPS and up to 50G acceleration with a 2000Hz polling rate and a response time of less than 0.5 milliseconds. So yeah, in terms of specifications, this thing absolutely rocks. So let's take a look at the packaging, go through some of the specifications, take a look at the mouse itself obviously. I've given it a test drive already and yeah, as far as performance is concerned, that is definitely five out of five. It's virtually perfect. It really and truly is. Of all the mice that I've tested over the uh, the years that we've been doing this and over the years I've been using mice on computers, this is possibly for me the best mouse I've ever actually had the privilege to use. So yeah, take that with whichever size grain of salt you wish, but that is my opinion. Anyway, moving on. So the packaging, as you can see, this is the Mad Cat's Bat 6 Plus Performance Ambidextrous Gaming Mouse. It has 16,000 DPI, the Dakota switches, which are good for 60 million key presses, and also you have interchangeable accessories, which we'll take a closer look at a little bit later on. On the side, there's a QR code, so I'll put that on the screen now, large, so you can scan it and uh, take a close look if you wish. On the back, it goes into a little bit more detail about what is going on here. So we've got the Mad Cat's Dakota switches, as we said, hyper-responsive timing of less than two milliseconds. We've also got an ergonomic and truly ambidextrous shape, chameleon RGB lighting, interchangeable side grips and palm rest, and a native 16K sensor. So that is pretty awesome. Again, it drills down to the specs there, DPI 600, 2000 hertz polling rate, etc., etc., etc. 10 programmable buttons, five onboard profiles that you can store, gives you dimensions, the weight, etc. Now the weight itself, actually, I would disagree with what it says on the packaging here. It says here 115 grams. I've put it onto the scale with the cable attached because it is a captive cable and I've worked it out to be around about 90 grams. So depending on which side pieces you, or additional items you put on the mouse, which will become apparent later, that might be the maximum weight. But certainly it doesn't have to be quite as heavy as that. And it really doesn't actually feel that heavy in use, which is uh, slightly odd. It does glide exceptionally well. So even though it is a slightly heavier weight mouse in terms of raw grams, actually in use, it doesn't feel very heavy at all. Okay, so let's take a look at the actual mouse itself. And as you can see, this is it. Actually a really, really nice shaped mouse. Again, being a left-hander, I often struggle to get a mouse which fits right. This is totally ambidextrous, so yeah, whether you're lefty or righty, you're gonna have no problems at all. If you're one of those people that you maybe share your PC, there's other people using it and you've got your mouse on your desk, it's really easy from someone being left-handed to just switch over and be right-handed. Very, very natural, it feels absolutely great. It slides along really nicely, even on this desk, which has got tons and tons of potholes and pit marks and screw holes, that kind of stuff. It just slides around absolutely great, which is surprising because on the bottom, there aren't actually that many skid plates. There's two on the front there, one on the back, and that is essentially it. But depending on what they're made of, they haven't actually specified. I'm guessing there's some sort of PTFE or Teflon. They do slide very, very nicely. The cable on the mouse itself is a really nice, strong braided cable. It's actually quite a kind of coarse feeling cable. It's very thin and narrow, but it does maintain its shape quite well. and does actually sort of move along 
doesn't get scagged or anything, so that's a very really nice touch. It is a USB cable. You can use it, obviously USB 3, USB 2, etc. You can plug it into a USB Type-C port if you want to with an adapter. It doesn't come with one, but certainly you can do if you want to for modern laptops, that kind of thing. So anyway, going back to the, uh, the mouse itself. So button-wise, we've got, obviously, your two main buttons, which is your left and right right click buttons there, which have got those really nice Dakota switches in them. You've also got a DPI button switch there. You've got your center mouse button. All of the switches really nice and clicky. And on the side, you've got your traditional back and forward button. So you can program those to be pretty much anything you want in the software. Actually in the software as well, you can control that. So those actually become keyboard buttons. So any of your keyboard buttons you can actually replicate. So if you wanted one to be maybe R for reload, you could program it to that. Escape key, enter key, whatever you want, you can do that. And also, because it's ambidextrous, you've got exactly the same on the other side as well. So depending if you're left or right-handed, again, those back and forward buttons are gonna be in the exact right place for you, which I actually find they are. It does feel very comfortable and very natural. And I can use my thumb on one side to maybe reload or do fast weapon switching, that kind of thing, and use my fingers on the other side to do whatever else. It is extremely good. I like this mouse a lot. Anyway, moving on to what I feel is possibly one of the most important, but actually one of the most kind of obvious things that I'm surprised a lot of mouse manufacturers have not done before. And this is its modularity. Now we all know that in Mad Cat's range, especially things like the Rat Mouse, they got some really crazy shapes and they're very configurable, so you can slide them, move them, etc., etc. But where this actually excels is you can take it apart and make it into something completely different. So first of all, you can replace the actual palm rest on the top here. So it's all of this is magnetic, so it just pulls off and you get another one in the box, which is slightly raised a little bit higher. And there you go, straight away, it gives a completely different feel to the mouse, gives you a lot more support in your palm. Absolutely brilliant. So the next thing is, well, okay, maybe I've got slightly larger hands and I wanna rest my fingers on the side of the mouse, like you do with most right-handed mice. Well, that, my friends, is not a problem. So what you can do is take that side off and these bits actually come off. The wings actually come off. And if you want to, if you prefer skinny mouse, then you can just do that, put those back on, and then all of a sudden, you've got a much slimmer mouse. So again, if you've got smaller hands, this is gonna be amazing. But again, if you wanna have those wider bits on the side, you can just put them into position. And this is pretty much, I think, where it gets its name from, the bat. So it now looks pretty much like a bat. And let's put the, uh, the top panel back on to give it the finished look. So there we go. So now we've got some more skid plates on the side to give you a little bit more stability. And now I can actually rest my finger and my thumb actually on the side and actually put a bit of weight on them. And because there's Teflon pads there, it's not dragging. So again, depending on what your use case scenario is, what your personal preferences are, it just feels really, really good. Now, personally, I actually don't particularly like the look of it when it's in this configuration, yet it feels very comfortable. And also because of the way it's been designed, as you can see, you can kind of pretty much see straight through these sections. So there is actually quite a lot of airflow. So where you've got all these kind of air gaps, it actually does help with not making your hand particularly sweaty. So if you're using this for extended periods, and we've had, as you can possibly tell already, we've had some pretty warm weather here in the UK, everything gets hot and sweaty, it is an island, we do get a lot of rain, so it's moist. It's that kind of country, so when it gets hot, it gets sweaty and it's not particularly comfortable. But this mouse actually has remained pretty decent and it's actually stayed pretty clean. Even though I've been sweating and drooling all over it, it actually just a quick wipe and it comes up pretty much as brand new. So, I'm, <laughs> as you can probably tell, I'm very impressed with this. Now, they haven't paid me to do this review, um, although it possibly sounds like they have because I am extremely impressed with it, but I'm just saying it as it is. For me personally, being a left-handed person, having the ability to actually use a mouse with this amount of configuration and possible options. Of course, one thing you can do as well, if maybe you like the bat side on one side but not the other, you don't have to use them all together. So you can have the slim side on one side, you can have the bat ear on one side. Again, it's entirely up to you and it all just snaps into place as you possibly just heard the magnet kind of snap into place there. It's a really, really cool system. And again, if you want that really narrow kind of feel to it, then you can just use it without any sides on at all. Absolutely excellent. 
I really, really do appreciate the amount of design and thought which has gone into this mouse. It is exceptional. So I've now gone ahead and plugged it in. So I've plugged it into the PC behind me. And you can see there is also some RGB on this mouse as well. Now, this is with the sides off, so you can see the, uh, the side bits there glowing up like a kind of uh, one of those American bugs that you get that hover around those blue lights. I'm not too sure what they are, but that's what it gives me the impression of. So if you wanted it, you could use it in that fashion with tons of RGB showing through. Again, because of the flexibility of it, if you put the, the side panels on, then it just mutes it and tailors it down a little bit more. So it just looks like a regular RGB mouse. They haven't overdone the RGB in my opinion. If anything, they've probably done it in a very kind of muted way. So with the, uh, the sides on there, you just get this really nice glow effect. Yeah, just very, very nice. It doesn't distract. It just does what it needs to do, but they've added the RGB because they know that there is a market for it. Now, of course, the RGB can, can be controlled in the Madcat software in that Cyborg setup that they've got, which actually we should go and take a look at now. So this is the Madcat software. This is their Cyborg software. And as you can see, this is the main screen. So you've got our programming screen. We've got our settings screen, Chameleon for the RGB, and then there's a support tab as well. This software is actually on version 1.0.54 currently. So obviously, Yours may potentially change, but you've got 10 buttons here, which you can all program, as we said earlier. So you can set those to either shortcuts, which are down here at the bottom, and you can scroll down through, there's an absolute ton of shortcuts. So you can have one for task manager if you want to, zoom in, zoom out, all those kinds of things, Windows 10 settings, really is an absolute plethora of things you can choose. But you can also choose keys, which is awesome. So anything which is on the keyboard, even things like the escape key, F1, F10, Whatever it is, home keys, fast forward, rewind, your Windows key even if you want to, you can quite easily just attach that to a particular key and then apply that to your profile, which is, yeah, is great. You've got a favorite section there and then you've got a custom, so you can create custom commands, macros, etc., etc. In settings, you've got your mouse response, DPI, so currently I've got it so the axes are linked, so the X and Y are linked. You can, if you want to, turn it off, so your X axis can be different from your Y axis, and also your DPIs can be changed independently. So I've currently got mine set to 1400, which for me is pretty much perfect. The standard setting, I think, was a little bit less than that, so I've adjusted it. You've also got four DPI levels, which you can change from the DPI button on the top, as we said before. So this is defaulting at the moment to 1400. Then we've also got 1600, then it moves up to 3200, and then 6400, which is what I have set it to. You can, if you of course want to, you can switch it all the way up to 1600, or 16,000 rather, and then you can use that in that particular mode. But I, uh, I rarely feel the need to actually do that. Fine, click on apply, and that is it. So profile is applied. Yeah, that's your DPI settings. You also got things like your DPI switch, so what it actually does. There isn't a button for DPI port down, so it's just that particular one, but you can choose it so it does something else if you want to. Okay, nice to see a little bit of configuration option in there. Poll rates, you've got the option, so currently I've got mine set to 1000, but if you want to, you can set it to 2000 hertz, and click on apply. If there's anything you don't like, then you can go ahead and reset to factory defaults, it's nice and easy to do. And you've got angle snapping, which you can choose to have on or off. I've currently got it set to off, but again, personal preferences, you may wish to leave it in the on position. Uh, Chameleon has got the RGB effects. There's not a great deal that you can do in here to be completely honest with you, but you can obviously tailor it to your individual setup. So you can put in your RGB colors there. You can choose a specific color. So if you want your pink or your purples or your reds, etc., you can do. Um, or just leave it to rainbow, breathing, standard static, or off altogether. Once you set it to whichever you want, just click on apply and then the effects will take place. So let's put that back to rainbow. If you know me, I like my rainbow. And you can obviously change the speed as well, how quickly it goes through the rainbow, whether it induces uh, some kind of seizure or not. Okay, it's hard up to you. And you can adjust the brightness as well, should you need to. And the last one is support. So you've got links there for downloading the drivers and software. There will be links in the video description as well. So if you want links to this software, it will be available. Although you can only use it when you plug in a device. Also, you've got options for contact us and their Facebook page, etc. But yeah, overall, I think it's a really nice package. It's a very lightweight package. It's a very small program, runs in the background, uses very, very minimal amount of resources for the system. So it's not one of those horrible bloated systems like the MSI one or 
or something like the uh, Armoury Crate, which is an absolute abomination. This just does what it needs to do. And once you're happy, once you've saved the settings, you can, if you want to, just remove the software. It's entirely up to you. So anyway, that is uh, the Mad Cat's Cyborg software. Okay, so there we go. We've had a quick look at the software. We've also had a look at the mouse and the various features. I've got to be honest with you, I'm super impressed. I really do love it. And there's a very strong chance that this is going to become my daily driver. I do like it a lot. And I didn't think that was going to be the case. Now, harking back to the one big downside, the price. The price for me is the thing which I think is going to be a little bit off put in. It isn't a cheap mouse. Now, I'm not going to tell you exactly how much it is because it could change. The price may drop. They may realize somewhere along the line that they can actually do it for a better value. It's not as if it's overpriced. It's just it's a lot of money for what it is, especially considering the alternatives on the market. Now, if you take off things like the side panels and possibly a different sensor, the Dakota switches, etc., just another mouse using that same sensor, the Pixar 3389, you can pick up mice in the region of about 30 to 50 pounds for a, a, a pretty decent mouse. If you're looking at an exceptionally good quality mouse, you're probably looking closer to, well, getting close to 100 pounds. So potentially there is room for this in the market at its current price. But I think for a lot of people, regardless of how good it is, regardless of what you get in the box, how nice it feels, etc., I think the asking price is still gonna be a little bit of a difficult one to swallow for some people. So I think that's gonna pretty much wrap up my review and thoughts on the Mad Cat's Bat 6 Plus. I've gotta be honest, I love it. I think it's absolutely brilliant. Whether or not I would go out and spend my harder money on it at original retail price, that is a possibly another matter for discussion. So let me know what you think in the comments section. I've been Mike, this is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.